Hello and welcome back to the Toronto website developer.com. I am PD Orsi, the Toronto website developer formerly specializing in Drupal, now looking at Android app development. And in this fourth video tutorial of our series on Android app development, I want to show you how we can take the views that we created in the last tutorial and actually manipulate them dynamically within our actual app. Before we do that, I'm over at Toronto website developer.com slash store. Here you can purchase my video tutorial series as I complete them. Um, each is only $20 and each sale goes to help me continue to develop these tutorials, keep them free and keep them frequent. So I greatly appreciate all the support. Alternatively, if you can't afford the $20, but do want to help out, please just leave me a comment or a thumbs up on YouTube. Both are greatly appreciated. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. I appreciate all of that support. And I do track all that as well as YouTube uh, to help promote these video tutorials. Now, heading back over to our app. Uh, you'll remember in the last video tutorial, we went ahead and created a bunch of views. We created uh, one edit text to actually allow a user to enter an answer to our equation and then some text views for us to actually manipulate uh, A, the equation, but then also the current score and the high score. In doing so, you remember we went to strings.xml and we actually edited some strings here so that we dynamically could ensure in the future if we want to do multilingual, we could. And we also have the dimensions set up so that they're reusable as well. Now, what we want to do is we want to head back to our main activity.java. This is our main class for our actual app. Um, and we're going to create a number of variables right off of the bat. And those variables, those variables, excuse me, are going to actually represent the views that we created. So we're going to create four of them. I'm just going to copy and paste them because uh, there's no point in you watching me type everything out. And so what these are, are private variables. And the first one's an edit text variable. Uh, this is a, rather an object. And so it's going to be our answer view. And then we've got text view object, high score, current score, and equation. This shouldn't be too, uh, too new to you. Um, but what we also need to do now is actually instantiate these. And I've actually gone ahead and removed the line here that we need, which is set content view uh, r, uh, dot layout dot activity mathlete. Um, and it's not activity mathlete. This should be activity main because that's ours here and that's from our xml and so what that just tells us to do you remember from previous video tutorial that associate this main activity with this layout and so now that we've done that android will actually uh, link up the edit text and text views that we have defined in our xml file to objects that we can use within our app and the way that we do that is by using a method off of the activity class called find view by id and so I'll just go ahead and, and type out the first uh, line that we're going to go ahead and do together. And then I'll copy everything else so that you can see it. Um, and you'll see I'm just going to comment a line here. And so first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually grab the equation. And so equation is equal to, and here we uh, add a type cast. And the reason we do that is because we're going to be grabbing um, a view object, but we want to make sure that it's actually casted to our text view. Um, and that's just to ensure that we don't have any hiccups down the line. And as I mentioned, we're going to use this find view by ID method, which comes from the activity class. And then we're going to pass in R dot ID. So R similar here uh, is, an, is an object that we have access to. And so R dot ID, and then the ID is actually going to be what we set. So it's going to be the equation. And we can go ahead and, and, uh, and add the semicolon. So now what we have access to is actual reference to the text view that we created here uh, and defined in XML. Um, and so I'm going to copy the other two lines that we're going to want to go ahead and grab. And those are the high score and the current score. And then actually a line that I have in a different section here. But our answer is also going to be uh, referenced here. But instead of text view, we're going to grab edit text. And same thing, find view by ID. And so now that we have these initialized views, we can go ahead and actually manipulate them to set the text on them. And so what we're going to do is do that in a separate method uh, that we're just going to call init to initialize the equation, right? And so we'll just do a protected uh, void because it's not going to return anything in it. And so in here, what we're going to do is actually initialize our, our views. Now, before we can do that, what we also need to do is, is create a few more uh, variables here. And so also private. First one's going to be a random object. We're just going to call it random. And this will allow us to create random integers that we can use for our equation. And then we're going to actually have num1, num2 to represent uh, the two numbers that we're going to be multiplying. And then we're actually going to store the answer so we can compare and ensure we get the right answer. So now what we should do here as well is we'll just do random is equal to new random. Right. 
so that we have that set up and we can reuse that uh, in the event that we need to. And down here, we can go ahead and we can actually set up our, our equation. So let's do that. So num1 is going to be equal to random dot next int, which is a, a method off of random. And we're going to pass in a value and it's going to be 12. And then we're going to do plus one. And so what next int allows us to do is create a random integer between zero inclusive and whatever number we provide exclusive. So this would actually be zero to 11. And that's why I'm adding a plus one here. And then num2 is going to be equal to random dot next int uh, 12 plus one. And then we want to have an answer. It's going to be num1 plus, oops, sorry, times num2. Uh, and that's because we're always just going to do multiplication for the purpose of this video tutorial series. We could theoretically do another random integer and determine what this operation would actually be. Now for the fun stuff. We have our random integers here. We have our, our reference to our views. We actually need to combine the two. And so first thing we're going to do is use equation and we're going to use a method on that, which is called set text. And so set text is going to take a string. And in order to convert num1, which is an integer to a string, we take a method from the string object, which is value of, and you'll see there's a whole bunch of values of, and one of them is an int that you can pass in. And so value of num1, and then we're going to combine that with just a, an x here. Oops, if I could type. And then we're going to do the same thing, string dot value of, and then we're going to pass in num2. And then that's going to be our equation. So that's going to actually set the text on that guy. And then we'll just go ahead and for right now, uh, because we're not recording it, we're just going to uh, set these to zero. Um, and that's for current score and then high score, we can go set text at zero. And then when we go ahead and run this, We can check out our emulator. It should load us up here. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and load that on the emulator. We can see now that we've got uh, 10 times six, which is great. And then we've got zero, zero. So rather than zero, zero, we should actually just put uh, current score, right? And then we'll do I score. Uh, and that's it. So that's it for this video tutorial. Um, again, all that we wanted to do was take those views that we created in the previous video tutorial in activity.main, grab a reference to them, and then actually set the text on them. And so that's what we've gone ahead and done. Um, in the next video tutorial, what we'll actually do is look at the, likely we'll take a look at the, um, the button listener. So we can actually provide an input and then grab that input and validate uh, the actual answer and then provide some type of message back to the user. But hopefully this video tutorial helped you. If it did, leave a comment or a thumbs up. Greatly appreciate it. Hopefully we'll see you for the next one. Thanks very much and take care.